If you're using Kajabi to help launch and grow your online business, then you need to know how to create not just a sales page on Kajabi, but one that really highly converts and walk you through the not so talked about features that can really enhance a sales page and help to convert more visitors into customers. And whether this is your first time finding me or your fifth video watching, I welcome you into this channel. Hey, I'm Danielle. I am a sales funnel and message strategist helping more business owners be able to convert people and move people like poetry. And the reason why I love these features is because they really help enhance the user experience, also help to cut a little bit more of that buyer's decision time that we don't really utilize enough. So let's dive in. Mini Danielle here. So I just wanted to go over the five main features, starting with the first one that you can probably actually notice right now, which is the menu up here. This is a customizable menu that you can't find in any of the current Kajabi templates. I think this is actually the only one inside of the Kajabi template store that does have it. It's one of mine. But the reason why I chose this as the feature that is really needed is because if you actually go to a lot of those really fancy sales pages, the ones that people spend thousands of dollars to create. This is actually one of the things that is normally at the top or at least somewhere embedded in the sales page. Because when you have a longer form sales page, and if you're not sure if you're at the moment right now where you're still trying to figure out, do I want a longer form sales page? Do I need one? Because let's be honest, that can take more time, both copy side and the design side. Or does a short form sales page make more sense? I have a separate video that I'll be going into to help you decide which one's best for you and your product and especially your audience too. But let's for now, you are doing a long form sales page. You know, you see this, it's it's a long sales page. But the reason why this is really important is because naturally people who go to your sales page, they're gonna be in a variety of different stages in terms of how close they are to buying. And a lot of people will go to a sales page more than once because they are, you know, taking time to just like weigh different options, digest the information. And there's gonna always be like the main topics, the main sections that get the most, the weight, the most time spent. And if you can start to add it in up top, then it actually can make the person, the viewer, you know, your potential customer can make them have a better experience and a quicker buyer's process. Because let's say they're on their third round looking at this, they'll be able to go immediately to the main sections that nearly everyone looks at. And I talk about this a lot, especially when I'm talking about Hotjar, which if you don't know, is a free tool that you can use to be able to install, it takes two clicks and allows you to be able to see what people are doing on all your pages, which is so helpful, especially as you're going to be optimized your page down the road. So let's say you get more traffic to it. You're not sure why people aren't converting. You can actually see what they're doing and where they're falling off on your page, which is just the best thing ever. So when you have that available, you'll actually be able to see which buttons they're clicking the most, which is really helpful for you to know, okay, if they're clicking this the most and they still haven't bought, why? So it can actually make a little bit of your life easier down the road too. But for the immediate, having these pieces here allows people to have an easier access to the sections that matter the most for them, which is usually always going to be the what's included section, the pricing, the FAQ, and then the immediate button of enrolling now. And especially if you have a long form sales page, it's why it's important is because to get to right now, beyond the buttons themselves, just to scroll naturally to get to the enroll now button, is about three scrolls, which is kind of a lot. And it's obviously why we have buttons here that take them down further, but it's important to have this up here as a way to be able to help make the customer's life easier. And also for you to be able to see what people are clicking on the most down the road. So as you can tell, the really cool thing about Kajabi, and you'll see here, I'm taking you behind the scenes. Um, this is actually going to be inside the template if you do decide to uh, buy it, or if you want to create something on your own, this is actually a link list. So this is something where a lot of people will use this if you're like adding multiple links to certain things. But what I did was I created it almost like a section header. So that way I could create custom call to actions, which are, you know, Kajabi's buttons. And the cool thing about Kajabi is it allows you to do a ver variety of options in terms of like what this call to action can link to. So I actually chose, let me move me out of the way. You can see here, go to section on this page. So each one of these buttons have that checked. So it has each one has at the call to action. And let me just move my face over here for you. <laughs> so you'll see here, this is all for the get uh, go to a section page. So the reason why is because we want to make it seamless for them. If this were to take them to a whole different page, it would really disrupt the way that they're trying to figure out things. It's kind of like a shortcut. We are creating a sales page shortcut on your sales page, making their life easier. But you can see I chose depending on what we're talking about, what we're linking to. So for the pricing button, I have it linked to the pricing cards down below right here. And then for the FAQ, I have it 
also all the way down here. And then it'll go to the unroll now, it goes back to the pricing card. And if you go to the FAQ here, you can tell it swings us all the way back down to the correct section. And then for the enroll now, if you have multiple price options, that's where it's really helpful to have it go to the pricing cards. You only have one option for pricing, you could take them straight to your checkout page. But this is really helpful mainly for the desktop format. So one thing I will note here, again, doing another inside baseball for you. If you're on Google Chrome, if <laughs> I feel like a lot of people are, but in case you aren't, this might not apply to you, but you can still kind of uh, get the, the notion. If you go to more tools and then go to developer tools, now we can actually see the uh, page on mobile. And you can tell that on the mobile side, I don't have the link list here. And the reason why I have it mainly for the desktop is because on the mobile side, this button is within the first scroll. You should always have some form of a button, some form of call to action that's easy for them to take the next step within the first scroll. That is a design, high converting design number one. But I think it's really important for you to realize here that sometimes the things we're going to do on the desktop might not always translate to the mobile version. This is one of the few features that I actually hide on the mobile side. So if you do get this template, I auto hide it for you because if not, it looks like there's like four buttons stacking under each other. And like, let's be honest, that doesn't look pretty. <laughs> And also it's not going to be helpful for your people either. I think there's been at least a dozen or more people who've gotten the specifics like pink template, but who've been able to use this and find really good results for their launches because we choose the features that are going to really enhance the person's ability to understand the information on the sales page, but also make it a little bit easier for them to buy. And if we can have the enroll button even higher, that's a really helpful thing for them to buy. Now for the second thing, I'm going to move my face back over here. Okay. For the second feature, there is what I call like the ethical urgency announcement bar. Now this really only matters if you are doing something that is launch based or if you have some type of launch format where there is a countdown. If you are doing something evergreen, you can just skip over to the next feature from this. But for those who are doing something that's a countdown focused, it's really amazing that Kajabi even has this feature because usually you'll have to create it on like a separate widget and like embed the code in. That happens a lot for people who are doing countdown timers and emails. So it's really nice because it allows people to have, again, this sense of what I call ethical urgency. I am not a fan of manipulation, even though as someone who knows a lot around sales psychology and like how the people work, I promise I do it for good. And I try and teach people the same. So even though there's a countdown here, as you can tell, I mentioned something around like a limited spots or price or bonus that expires, something that's actually true. So like the ethical part is that you're not just going to be saying I have two spots left and then the two spots get picked up and then you still have that on your page because you really didn't mean it. Make sure that if you are doing a countdown timer, that is going to be something that is ethical, that is actually going going away at some point rather than just a way to like manipulate the person because that doesn't feel good for the person. You're going to end up having the person have buyer's remorse or feeling kind of icky and then might end up asking for a refund. So it's really helpful as always when selling or marketing, please be ethical always first. So this thing is really cool because it's actually inside of back in the behind the baseball. I think that's the right, that's the wrong metaphor behind the curtain. So inside of here, this is an announcement bar. So the cool thing about it is you have this countdown thing. Now the countdown actually is tied to an event. So if you were to actually go into this, you have to create a separate event inside of Kajabi. It's super simple. It takes two seconds. All I named mine was sales page countdown. I made it for like a year <laughs> so that the countdown could be continuous, but it's something you can take in two seconds and then just embed it here. Like how you would for an opt-in form that you're going to be embedding onto it, like a webinar or our lead magnet page, and it'll auto show this for you. And then obviously you can change the countdown style everyone's different. I have mine set up for minimal, but if I want to do boxed, it would change it up a little bit. And then there is this option of, in case it is an actual ethical urgency where, you know, the spots end, you can also have them go to another URL after. So this is really helpful for those who have like limited spots, you know, the deadlines July 1st, so then by July 2nd, it can then auto redirect them to maybe a sales page or something else that is more evergreen because they lost out on that urgency. So in case that works there, or they have this option too, which is really nice, which is remove section on completes. So like once this countdown ends, it'll auto take off the section for you. So there's a lot of cool ways you can use it. I do recommend having this still on the mobile version because the countdown is really helpful to have. But if you don't have anything at the moment that you are really using this for in terms of, you don't really have something that you're having an urgency for, you can take this out or have it just replace instead of the timer, just have a really transformational testimonial instead. So I find that in if I don't have something 
something that I'm trying to promote in terms of an urgency perspective, I'll add in something like, let's say the program's about shoes. I don't know why a lot of my examples are about shoes, but let's say the shoes, for example, the testimonial says like, after buying this program, the, the shoes program changed my entire life. Very lofty testimonial, but can help people to prime immediately and say, okay, there is some weight in this program. It means that much to someone. So in case you don't want to use an urgency announcement bar, you can still use the announcement bar and then just take off the countdown and just use the text and replace that with a testimonial instead. Super simple. So those are the first two that you can see up front that were like the two main features that really can help to enhance the user's experience, especially for, for buying and helping prime them to be in that like the easy to buy state. Now the other pieces you probably have seen before, <laughs> but I want to talk about them. So the pricing cards. So this is something that if you do have something that is multiple price options, right now this one's only two. Some people have three don't go over three. It does overwhelm the person's um, pricing decision making. It's why if you go to car dealerships, they usually only offer you three options or less because they know like you'll get overwhelmed. Um, it's just how our brains work. So let's say you just have these two options. The really cool thing about the pricing cards that people don't really take advantage of as they should. So naturally when we are talking and we're going behind the scenes again. Um, and actually the really cool thing about the pricing cards is that we're able to really manipulate and choose the level of like spacing there is between things and what we can add into all the text. And whenever we're trying to have someone choose an option that maybe we want them or think they're going to be best in. So for example, in these two options is the uh, $9.97 and then there's the $97 a month. Most people, when they're offering multiple options, want them to go for the bigger price point. So the, and they, they, they do save more here too. I think <laughs> I actually never did the, the math for this, but it looks like it would be less. So most people would want them to go through the 997 instead. So depending on which option you like the most, this is where it's really important. If you don't already have text that can make this longer, even just adding in a little bit of extra spacing at the top and bottom. Let me just add that back in here for a second so I can show you what I mean and then press save. So as you can tell, I haven't made a huge difference. I would probably exaggerate a little bit more, but this is a little bit larger in terms of like the length of it than this one is. And again, this is where if you have, have physical text to make it longer because you are offering more amazing, this is where it's a, just a more of a pricing psychology or like sales psychology thing. Naturally, if we see a longer list like this, we perceive it as more valuable. So when we're trying to have someone who we know like the annual option is a better option for them, they save more money and also that gets more support, all that kind of stuff. We want to give them the accessibility of the options, but also maybe like help them to see like this is the better option. If you even just make this current pricing card a little bit bigger and add in more of the text, maybe to explain further how amazing this is. So it becomes longer. I know the design principle naturally, we think about harmony and symmetry that they're gonna be the same price or the same um, height and length. But in this scenario, it's actually better to make this look a little bit longer. Don't make it super exaggerated to the point where they're like going through two scrolls to read through all of it. But if you can make it a bit longer, it actually can help with people choosing this option because it's perceived as a bigger value. And it is, again, this is where ethics matter because ethically they are saving more, this is a better option for them. But sometimes having the design actually showcase, like this is the better option by having it look longer and having it look like there's perceived value of like this having a more information and deliverables for them, more support, it can help them to choose the options actually best for them that is able to be shown better visually through this little hack. Again, you don't have to do it, but I wanted to offer that option in case you were wondering why on certain pages there are that option of like, there's certain um, sections on the pricing that are longer than others. There's actually a little bit of a psychology behind it. But again, ethics first, only do this if it's actually going to help the customer, like it's actually in their best interest to do this. So that's the pricing card. Again, everyone has them on, on your sales pages, but sometimes it's nice to have that. The other thing that I would say that I would use for a pricing card, as you can see these two buttons, the same color and the text of the font and the button itself, I would probably make this one a little bit brighter uh, in terms of the colors. That way it stands out more compared to this because also sometimes when people are looking at these two things and they look rather similar, it can be harder for their brain to distinguish like which one is which, especially if you're looking down at the desktop from this version. So I would make this button a little bit brighter as there's a reason why a lot of people use yellow buttons because naturally have an association to like click it, especially throughout the years. Don't You don't need to do yellow, but any type of bright color for the button background can help to naturally bring the eyes towards that button. Um, the other two little features that I wanted to go over here, the FAQ. I have 
have an entire video about this because it's so interesting to me. The FAQs need to be used better <laughs> for most business owners. We are not using it well. And unfortunately it affects a lot of people's sales because of it. Naturally, we think of frequently asked questions as a way to answer like logistical questions. So like questions, for example, how long do I have access to the program um, for X amount of time? Where are the call times? What are they? And these are very like solid questions to ask, but the things up top should always be what I call like objection based questions where there's an objection usually around money, around time, around situations that actually need to be better answered by you, the, you know, the expert in this that is not being showcased well. So for example, one of them here, I actually give you this in the template right here. This is like the thought they're having. How do you reframe it? And then show them then like what's the best option. So for example, one of them is one of the big objections for one of my former clients was like being the right person, which means like, am I the right person for this program? This is a business program. So for them, it was like, how big is my business have to be? What if I'm just starting out? All of these questions, which really all tie back to, again, having them hold, they're holding themselves back from buying because they don't know if this is the right place for them. So this is where you would then reframe it. Let's show you how then this is not true in terms of like just showing either people who are in this that are a big business that have started out. You can blend that back in here and really reframe for them and actually you can use chat GPT to help reframe this for you and reframe all I mean it's let's say the sky isn't blue how are you going to show them through fact and through not as emotional more of like logical perspective of like no the sky is actually blue because of this example of this example because of this reframe this this like different thought building a case for actually the sky is blue that's kind of what we're doing here so that way you're actually helping do some objection handling on the sales page which then makes the buyer process a lot quicker and makes your life easier because you're having to answer less questions or for people who are asking these in the DMs, you have a dedicated place or emails um, to send them to. So I think this is probably one of the most underutilized sections on a sales page that need to be better utilized. Even if you were to put the top two or three around like money, around time, around results, around if it's worth it and reframe those, boy, would your life be easier. Now this final feature, although it's not needed, but I think it's really helpful, is going to be right up here, these feature cards. So inevitably, as we're talking about a program, there are so many things you can highlight. There's so many features that you have that you already are including inside the what's included section. But having these little features here, these are where I really recommend you to really understand and know what your unique selling propositions are for your program. Very big word. But really what I mean here is like, what is the specific features or angles of what makes your program different? So if I were to ask you like, what makes your program different out of all of the rest, what would be your answer? And beyond, you know, just like it has more support. How can we be specific and better iterate that so people can see immediately, like this is why your program is unique. And having these feature cards here, you don't have to have all three. You can maybe have only like one or two, but if you're able to state that, especially right before the pricing card happens, it helps to prime the brain to say, oh, wow, this is so valuable and so unique to what I'm looking for versus if it were just to kind of like hide in some of the longer text pieces here or just throughout the page or other emails. The reason why this program is so unique and so specific to what I need is because it actually has this thing that I never was able to put into words, but you have it and that's amazing and it's clearly stated and you can have a visual example to show kind of like what that means, hence why I have this here, that you can customize yourself on like the chat feature. But a lot of people miss this mark in terms of their sales page, especially for new programs. As you're launching this and scaling this more, this might be something that is a hard thing for you to answer at first. So this is where I do have a couple of hacks for like chat GPT or other things or asking your current audience, like what makes it unique first. If you're in the process where you've never launched this program before, you might be able to just hide this section for the moment if you feel like it's too overwhelming. Um, and instead you can replace this with other testimonials, or you can replace this just with like a little feature on um, making the what's included section a little bit more visual. So maybe instead of having that like unique feature that only your program might have, or like you deliver it in a way that no one else does, maybe instead you just make that feature have the one-to-one -one 60 minute session or something like that. You don't have to make it specific, but it really does help as you go on it, as you're scaling this for people to be able to have a dedicated way to also then down the road, refer your program and know how to speak about it too. Because if you're able to have these really clear ways to say like, this is why the program's different, then they're able to share it with their friends and their people who are going to be better fits for this to know how to speak about it in a way that then will help the other person to be able to buy down the road.
And just to recap the main five features that no one talks about that can really be helpful for creating a high converting sales page is one, that top menu, two, the announcement bar, three, the FAQ section, four, the pricing cards, and then five, those feature cards. A lot of business owners aren't intentional with that can really make a difference in helping your leads and prospects be able to have an easier purchasing process because you're really speaking the things and putting in the design elements that can make their purchasing decision a lot easier and a lot quicker. So I'd love to know in the comments below if you have a favorite feature or things that you're working on inside of Kajabi. There is gonna be some upcoming videos of a similar format in case you are doing something around creating a webinar page and opt-in page and wanna know some of my other quick hacks and features that I love to use to help make those a little bit more converting as well. So stick around, hit the notification bell, like, and all that kind of fun stuff. And I hope to make your life designing in Kajabi just a little bit easier with these videos and in the template shop as well. So I'll see you in the next video. Happy designing.